Marco Polo famously traveled to Asia in the middle of the 13th century, returning to his native Italy, 1295, where he was in prison. While incarcerated, he dictated his story to a romance writer named Restacillo of Pisa, who penned the text that became the basis for Marco Polo's fame. This book full of excursions into the legendary is a confused mixture of legitimate observation and entertaining invention. In this excerpt, Marco describes Genghis Khan killing Prester John. Later, after Prester John has become associated with Ethiopia, early modern academic writers begin to unravel the legend by arguing based on these stories in Marco Polo that Prester John was actually an Asian monarch. Such was the authority that Marco Polo's book carried. We're reading out of Prester John, the legend and its sources by Keegan Brewer. A hop to aqua type battle in the battle family for this great hard copy right here and the PDF that's in the drop library at 432thedrop.com. And now they say, you know, I'm on page 178, Marco Polo, Book of the Marvels of the World. And this um, particular manuscript is dated to 1298, 1298 or 1299 A.D. So they bring up Ethiopia, they bring up Asia. Both cases are misnomers because Ethiopia is a vague term to describe a land of dark skinned people, so so to speak. Asia, <laughs> we're in it, you know, we're in Asia. So, you know, whether they went from Ethiopia to Asia, like, you know, it's all about perspective, man. To get the babies out the bathwater. We have to see that Marco Polo, whether in Ethiopia there or Asia here, Marco Polo's writing about an invasion in 1298, an invasion between Genghis Khan and Prester John. And now that you can see the maps in the British Museum in 1530, of this whole southwest area and all over here labeled as Prester John, the land of Prester John. In America, in the 1500s. Now, this is dated around 1300, 1298, right? So I think we're seeing the picture. So where did Genghis Khan invade Prester John? I'll wait. Right here in America, right here in home. This is the press the owl. Excerpt does at points contain a veneer of factual historical events taking place in Western China in the 13th century. Where's China, my naga? Where's India, my naga? Let's go, man. It's from a wave surfer, so. Let's read this uh, Marco Polo document from 1298. <clears throat> this veneer of factual historical events between Genghis Khan and Prester John. This is Prester John, the legend and its sources. A compilation of texts, you know, all throughout this medieval time. So let's go. Now it says the Tartars lived in the north near Sisuria or Siosiria or Siorcia, C I O R C I A. Now in the fine print it says probably a rendering of Gurchen, J U R C H E N. And that comes up a lot, you know, in the Mongol history. Now, 
Gur Chen is also Gur Khan. G U R is also J U R. You know what I mean? So, in the countries, in this country, there were great plains that did not have dwellings like cities and castles. But there were good pastures there and plenty of great rivers and lakes. They did not have lords, but they certainly paid tax to one great lord who was called in their language Unk Khan, U-N-C, is also O-N-G, Ong, is also Ong, which became Wang, which became uh, Wan. <laughs> so it went from Ong to Ong to Wang, W-A-N-G. In Spanish, they would say Juan, which is simply John. And all that means king. Khan, C-A-N, is also K-H-A-N. Khan is also American priest. So Ong is also king. And Khan is also priest. So we have a prester, John, which means in French, the great Lord. And this was the prester, John, of whose kingdom everyone speaks. In the 1200s, 1300s, right here in America, my night. India Superior, right? And this was the Prester John of whom everyone speaks, whose kingdom. And again, in the British Museum, they got the map of Prester John's kingdom right in North America. Now it says the Tartars paid him a tax. Now when they say the Tartars, they're referring to Genghis Khan in it. Even though we all were falling under these titles by some, you know, it depends on who's speaking. But relatively speaking, when you're hearing Tartars, you're talking about Genghis Khan and, and the crew. Right? When you're hearing uh, Mongols, a lot of times you're talking about Preston John and the crew. So you hear about a Tartar-Mongol war or you know, but they're both labeled at different times as both these things. Sometimes Preston John is labeled a Tartar. Sometimes Gang is labeled a Mongol. Specifically, when they're referring to Preston John, they'll say Kara Katai. Kara means black or melanated or copper color. Uh, you know, Kara Katai. Katai is also Cathay. Katai became Cathay, which means a pure land. So these black people are melanated copper color cons connected to the promised land. Katai, Cathay, Cathness. So those are the labels. So right here we have a Tartar versus Kara Katai, Kara War with the priest king. The Tartars paid him a tax. So yeah, everybody paid tribute to King David. It says of one animal for every 10. So they had to get 10%. Now it happened that they multiplied greatly. And when Preston John saw that they were such a great people, great people, he said that they could harm him and said that he would disperse them throughout many lands. And so he sent one of his barons there to do this. And when the Tartars heard that Preston John wanted to, what Preston John wanted to do to them, they became sad. So, of course, you're talking about somebody's perspective of why King David, you know what I'm saying, uh, was having an issue with this particular group. Whether you're talking about heathen, whether you're talking about certain tribes of Israel, you know, everyone paid tribute, my night, you know what I'm saying, to the Grand Khan. If you're the king of, of you know, Israel, you're the king of the northern and southern tribes. You know what I mean? Or you're the king of the southern tribes. You're the king of, you know, King David during that time when everything was splitting up. You got these wars going back and forth. So when you hear a lot about these wars, it sounds a lot like Israel on Israel situation that we be reading about in the script. But it's coming to life. The more and more war. So they were sad that Preston John wanted to disperse them, they said. And they all departed together and headed 
for the deserts towards the north where Preston John could not harm them. So now they're on the run. <laughs> and they rejoice because they no longer had to pay any tax. <laughs> and so they stayed there a long while. Now it happened that in the year 1187 from the incarnation of Christ, dodged the hijack, the Tartars made one of them king. So they king themselves. Now they are calling themselves royals. Right now they got a king. But are they the real royals? Who's the real royals? They're all melanated. But this group of melanated people decided to make themselves royals instead of being natural <laughs> by law. Love to the bro. <clears throat> so they made themselves a king. And his name in their language was Chinggis Khan or Genghis Khan. And he was a man of great valor and great wisdom. And great prowess. And indeed I tell you that when this man was chosen as king. All the Tartars of the world who had spread throughout these foreign countries. Came to him and held him as lord. And this Genghis Khan maintained the kingdom well and nobly. Okay. Now why would he be so noble? We've been digging on Nebuchadnezzar as the son of Sheba and Solomon. Now, he's not, you know, so-called, you know, chosen to reign, you know what I mean, through the, you know, Israelite line, right? But he is the son of Solomon. And he got all his idols and all this stuff, but a while I say, look, y'all gonna go after idols anyway, I'm gonna send... I'm gonna send the I I'm gonna send the idolater of my choosing, <laughs> who happens to be a son of Solomon and the first woman of creation, Lilith Manai or Sheba. Cause she ain't no monster. And Lilith just means, you know, derogatory for monster, so she wouldn't call herself a Lilith, right? Now if Nebuchadnezzar has any connection. With Genghis Khan, which we've been surfing that way for a minute, then we have to also throw out the possibility that Genghis Khan is a son of Solomon. <laughs> and that's why he would feel noble and that's why he would be anointed their king because he is of noble blood. But he might not be, you know, the exilarch of they're choosing as far as the Israelites, right? So he might be outcasted as being a mother. His mother is Lilith, right? His mother is Sheba. And now they're being outcasted. Why? What's going on? And he's raised under Prester John. And then, you know, they fight a lot of wars side by side, Genghis Khan and Prester John. They call him his uh, nephew. Well, if Preston John is David and Genghis is a son of Solomon, then that would make him grandpops, huh? Some say uncle. Either way, it seems like there's an actual blood relationship between Genghis Khan and Preston John. He wasn't just a wannabe noble. You know, he might not have been in a certain line of nobility, you know, but he was a noble. So he was chosen. He was a man of great valor. And they said he ruled the kingdom well and nobly. And what can I tell you? They became such a great multitude of Tartars there that it was marvelous. So this is from the perspective of one of these Tartars or 
Marco Polo who's rocking under Genghis Khan, right? So, you know, it's going to be a little bias against Preston John and a little bit in Genghis Khan's favor. But, you know, that's that's his right. Now, let's go. And Genghis Khan saw that he had such a great people. He prepared them with bow and with other weapons of theirs and went conquering throughout certain other regions. Uh-oh. Is that noble or is he just, you know, on some takeover now? And I tell you that they easily conquered eight provinces, but he did not do anything bad to them, nor did he take their things. But he took them with no, he took them with him to conquer other people. <laughs> Hold up, you didn't do nothing bad to them, but you stole them and you made them fight your war. But that's nothing bad, though. They can't live in peace, though, you know. <laughs> All right. So he used them to conquer other people. And in, in this way, he conquered his, this great multitude of people, as you have heard. And this people, when they saw the good kingdom and the great kindness of that Lord, a great number of them willingly rallied to him. And when Genghis Khan had amassed such a great multitude of people, which covered the whole world, he said that he wished to conquer a great part of the world. Then he sent his messengers to Preston John. And this was in the year 1200. And he sent word to him that he wanted him to give him his daughter as wife. Now, why would he have the audacity? First, we're like, man, maybe he's just cold stone tripping. But Genghis Khan has his side of the story. Ain't nobody perfect in this. Genghis Khan saying, look, man, I'm Solomon's bond. You know, I'm a noble. <laughs> All right, you know, now, you know. <laughs> He's thinking that he he got the drop. Now, what did Preston John say? What happened? And when Preston John heard that Genghis Khan ordered him, to give his daughter as a wife, he was greatly outraged. And he said, how can Genghis Khan ask my daughter as wife without great shame? Does he not realize that he is my vassal and my servant? So, yeah, you might be blood related to me, man, but you are my vassal. You are my servant. What do you mean you're on my level to take my daughter? My daughter? <laughs> you know, you know, you know we're, we're throwing, you know, we're trying to put this puzzle together. Are they blood related? We don't know. Maybe Genghis is outside the family. We don't know. Maybe he is Nebuchadnezzar. Maybe he's not. We don't know. But we're learning to ask the right questions. This is one complex puzzle, but all praise to Allah, with the vibration, we could begin to see clearly. Go back and tell him that I would rather have my daughter burned than give her to him as wife. Uh-oh. And tell him on my behalf that I ought to put him to death if he acts like a traitor and a villain against his Lord. So clearly this is personal, man. You know what I'm saying? You heard about Genghis Khan, but nobody tells you about Preston John. If Genghis Khan is so real, so is Priest King Kandawi. Then he told the messengers to depart immediately from his presence and never return. And when the messengers heard this, they immediately departed. They went so far that they came to their Lord and they told him everything that Preston John had said, omitting nothing, all in order. And when Genghis Khan heard the great dishonor that Preston John had done him, his heart was so inflamed that it almost burned from within his breast. Why? You see, his heart wouldn't be inflamed, Anagi, 
if he was nobody. He would expect that. That's like, uh, you know, you know, let's just make this about so-called whites for a minute. Donald Trump, you know, that, that that's popular news, right? So that's like Donald Trump, you know, he has a daughter. And some, you know, nobody kid, you know, you see movies like this all the time, you know, some nobody kid, no, nobody white kid, you know, he's from a poor family and he just expects Donald Trump to give him his, his daughter as, as a wife. Donald Trump would say, look, peasant, like, what are you talking about, man? Why would he even ask for Donald Trump's wife, though? I mean, excuse me, daughter, you know, why would he even think he could? Unless, you know, he's related, <laughs> you know, unless he feels he has some type of claim. Now, whether he's a grandson, a foster son, a nephew, whatever he's, you know, whatever's clever. It wasn't just about uh, falling in love with King David's daughters. You know, he had many daughters, right? You know, it's more of a status thing. Like, you, oh, you got a David. You know, you got a, a Sheba, my knock. Surely David's daughters would be a Sheba, just like his wife is a Sheba. So it's all about getting you a Sheba, man. You know what I mean? Hey, con up to the queens. And look out for the Sheba series, man. Like I said, we got to zero in on Princess Scotia and, and so many more of these queens, so. It's going to be a fun series, man. We, we've we earned our right to get back into that and so many things. And you've been patient, my knock, and patiently waiting, you know, uh, just all along the way. Fulfill, you know what I'm saying, uh, the expectation and do it the right way. You know what I mean? And um, like I said, just continue to ask the right questions and, you know, formulate the plan and the vibration together. It's not like one person's idea, you know, it's, it's us, my knock. You know, this is us. The search for Preston John is us. The orientation is us. The frequency is us. The indigenous truth, my naga, is us. The code, keepers of the code, the code is us. It's all us. You know, whether we're talking frequency, indigenous truth, my naga, whether we're talking the code, my naga, whether we're talking about orientation, it's us, my God. You dig? This land is us. Let's go. So Genghis Khan is mad, mad. Now he's in his feelings. <laughs> and I should tell you that he was a man of great power. After a brief silence, he proclaimed in a voice so loud that every bystander could hear it, that he would that he would on no account retain his sovereignty if the insult that Preston John had done him did not cost its maker dearer than any insult had ever yet cost any man. So he mad man. Again, why is he so mad? Why are you mad, Genghis? If you're just a nobody, I mean, you would expect that type of response from any royal not especially if you're not even in the cold was Genghis Khan rocking in the cold I mean was Nebuchadnezzar in the cold or was he you know the king of the idolaters my naga like you know was, was his people you know connected with this Moal like they say he's from the land of Moal M-O-A-L which sound a lot like Moab you know what I mean were they keeping the call? So was it so much about uh, him being a vassal or vessel of, of Preston John? Or was he, you know, in a more of a heathen flow? Remember, Solomon had his own idol situation. And now you, you got a son of Solomon, you know, Nebuchadnezzar and then deep into it. Right. So maybe Preston John was just like, nah, man, I already know how y'all rock. So y'all going to be my vessels since you were that far out the cold with your idolatry. Maybe it was more of that type of level. And Genghis just, Genghis just didn't see that, right? 
But he's been risen up for a reason, right? He's in, I mean, he's talking about captivity, right? Babylonian captivity. Who's the king of Babylon? Genghis Khan? Nebuchadnezzar and them? Same people, same thing? We putting the story together. Let's go. Remember, this document was written in the 1200s by Marco Polo. We're reading Marco Polo's writing. Let's go. And he said, Genghis, Genghis Khan said that he would soon show him that the Prester John was in fact his vassal. So here we go. And so he brought all his people together and made the greatest army which has ever been seen. That's why I say this is the first major world war, my Nagi. Popping off 1200. 1200. In America, my Nagi. Dragons, dragons everywhere, my Nagi. He informed the press to John the priest king that he was coming against him with all his forces so that he could defend himself as best he could he wasn't no coward he wasn't no punk about the shit he let him know I'm coming right down the middle with everything I got do your best he didn't want no surprises ain't no play play it's me and you con on con You gotta respect it. Let's go. And when the press to John knew for certain that Genghis Khan was coming against him with such a great people, he made a mockery of it. Oh, the press to, you know, he ain't sweating that. <laughs> and thought it as nothing. For he said they were not men of arms. But nevertheless, he said to himself inwardly that if he came, he would do everything in his power that they would that they would take him and put him to an evil death. Let's get a little more of this. And so he gathered all his people from the lands far and wide. He made such a great army that no one has ever heard tell of a larger host. Okay, so you got two great armies. I'm trying to tell you. It's the greatest world war you've ever really never heard of. In this way, as you have heard, the one people was set up against the other. And why should I tell you a long story? You should know that in truth, Genghis Khan, with all his people, came to a wide and beautiful plain called Tanduk. Now, Tanduk is also Tangu, T-A-N-G-U-T. And you can see that. On that map of India Superior that's in your map pack or in your ether pack, my noggin. And uh, yeah, you're going to see Tangu right around like the East Coast, right? <laughs> of North America, Canada, you know what I mean? All right there. So it's all happening, my noggin, right here. You dig? Tandu, Tangu is right here in North America. On the maps, my noggin, in the 1500s in North America. So he said he, you know, Genghis Khan went to this wide and beautiful plain called Tanduk or Tangu, which belonged to Prester John. And there he made his camp. And I tell you that they were such a great multitude of people that no one could know their number. And there he heard the news that the Prester John was coming and he was glad. Because that was a beautiful and large plain, large enough for battle. And for this reason, he waited there and greatly desired his coming so he could join battle with him. But now the story no longer speaks of Genghis Khan and his men and returns to Prester John and his men. Now the story goes that when the Prester knew that Genghis Khan was coming against him with all his people. He went against him with all his people. And they went so far that they came to the plain of Tanduk, Tangu. And there they made camp 20 miles distant from that of Genghis Khan. And both sides rested so that they could be fresh and ready on the battle 
on the day of battle. In this way, as you have heard, these two enormous armies were on the plains of Tanduk, and one day Genghis Khan and his astronomers brought before him both Christian and Saracens and commanded them to tell him who would win the battle between him and Preston John. The astrologers performed their art. The Saracens were not able to tell him the truth of the matter, but the Christians showed it to him frankly. They placed before him a stick and split it through the middle lengthwise, then placed one half over there and the other half over there. And no one was touching. And no one was touching them. Then they put the name Genghis Khan on one half of the plank and the other half pressed to John and they said to Genghis Khan, Sir, look now at these pieces of wood and see that this one has your name on it. And the, and the other one, the name of Preston John. And when we have made our enchantment, whichever one of the pieces of wood ends up above the other will win the battle. And love to the bro, Yohannitin, we, you know, talking about them, them enchantments, you know, <laughs> them old magical spells. And stuff. I mean, you know, so they did some type of magic, right? <laughs> They're just doing magic, energy, frequency, vibration. And, uh, you know, he, they were, you know, reading into this with this, you know, astrology perspective, you know what I mean, as to who's going to win this war, right? So, Genghis Khan said that he was very happy to see this and told the astrologers to show him as soon as possible. And so the Christian astrologers took up their psalter, read certain psalms and made their enchantment. Didn't the bro Yohannes to break down how they be digging on the Psalms and, you know, reading whole joints, man, just as part of their spells? What are they aware of that we are about our stuff? And they know they were going to war with the Hebrew and these Christians were using Hebrew magic, you know, a twisted, you know, a bastardized version of it. Now, so they had Christians and Saracens, so you had Muslims and Christians. <coughs> Let's go. So they read their Psalms, made their enchantments, and then the piece of wood that had Genghis Khan's name on it without anyone touching it touched the other and rose above that of Preston John. And this was seen by all those who were there. When Genghis Khan saw this, he rejoiced greatly. And because he found the Christians to be truthful, <laughs> he thenceforth did great honor to Christians. So that's why they said they all converted to Christianity and always held them to be truthful and reliable men. Then two days later, both sides armed themselves and fought each other bitterly. And the battle was so great that it is like its like has never been seen. Managa, the greatest war war you ain't never heard of. Heavy losses were sustained on both sides, but in the end, Genghis Khan won the battle. And in this battle, Preston John was killed. Now, when you research David Soslin, S-O-S-L-E-N, as a Babylonian exilarch, it's happening at the same time as this. And, you know, he's the son of Raja Hiraja Preston John. You know, you can uh, go to genie.com, G-E-N-I. Com. You can put all this in and see it for yourself. So David Sauslin, actually like David, is the son of an of Preston John. So then you have to see perspective that Preston John, his son, is also a David and also a Preston. On and on and on we go. So the question is, did the Preston John get killed or did Preston John's son, David, Exilarch, get killed? You know, which Preston, you know, it's not just, you know, one person when you say Preston, you know, this is a title and we like to zero in on Moses. We like to zero in on David, Joshua, you know, different Prestons throughout, you know, our flow, our time and the script. And then we go to the Prestons like to cool, say, man, love to the bro, you know what I mean? And start digging on Dragon Canoe and these other Prestons, you know what I mean? But, uh. 
who who got killed by Genghis Khan? Which Preston got killed? I mean, that's the question we have to ask. Now check this. In the fine print, when we look at that Tangu, Tangu, T-A-N-G-U-T, is also known as the Western Shi or Shia, X-I-A. We connected this with the Almec already with the Shi, right? The Almec are the Shi, and then you got another Shi in the Mongol history, and you got to know that it's the same Shi. They say the Western Shi. A sovereign state. A sovereign state. Tangu is actually the name of a people. So these Tangu are the Almec, my nigga. We're the Almec. Let's go. So they say a Prester John was killed. Okay, and from that day. Genghis Khan was constantly attacking that land which he held before he died. And I say to you that Genghis Khan reigned for six years after this battle and conquered many castles and many provinces. But at the end of those six years, he went to a castle called Kaju, C-A-A-G-I-U. And there he was wounded by an arrow to the knee. And from this blow, he was killed. Kind of sounds like a Achilles, you know. I mean, that whole situation in Troy, you know what I mean? He gets hit in the Achilles, and that's supposed to be it for him. So Genghis Khan got hit in the knee and said he died. Okay. And this was a great shame, for he was a noble and wise man. For I told you how the Tartars selected their first rulers. That being Genghis Khan, that being Genghis Khan, and I have also recounted how they first defeated Preston John. Now I will tell you about their clothes and their customs. So, if Preston John or A. Preston was defeated in 1200 in America, in Tangu, or you know around this uh, vicinity here, my Nagadin, you know you got to put it all together, man. Like what happened right after that? That was the beginning of the fall. You know, um, the script says that, you know, King David will rise again. Right. So was he defeated, like, you know, killed, like they say, or, you know, what I mean, uh, you know, I mean, do we have any eyewitnesses? It is. Where's the body? You know, where's all that? You know, or did he stand down? You know, what I mean, for a particular reason, you know, what I'm saying when you're reading the book of Daniel, you don't know that that's. Kiliab, you know, the second son of King David with Abigail, you know, so <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar has King David's son in captivity or Preston John's son in captivity, Daniel Kiliab, you know, is this a reason why Preston would step down, you know, um, These are things that we are, you know, connecting because it all connects. I mean, Columbus comes in the 1400s, man. So that's 200 years later. One thing has to do with the other. We just weren't taught about it. The Genghis Khan invasion has everything to do with the Columbus invasion. Estebani, go more and more war. We're going to get a piece of this and then we're going to continue it on the next Press the Hour. Tangu, Tangu is a province towards the east and that contains many villages and castles. Castles in America, my name. That belong to the Great Khan or the Grand Khan. Now, what does it have to do with the Grand Khan? Grand Khan or the Grand Khan John? Or the great conjunction. <laughs> Let's go. Because the subjects of Preston John belong to the Grand Khan. The main city is Tandu. 
again, that's the name of the people who are the she, who are the Almec, who are the Toltec. <laughs> so vain is Toltec, it's Solomon the Builder, son of who? David, Solomon Bravo, the Barbers, the Swan Knights, back to Preston John. So the king of this province is of the same lineage as the Prester John, and later he becomes Prester John. Mm -hmm. So which Prester uh, was killed by Genghis? They said, if you know, if he's from the lineage, then Genghis didn't kill the original Prester. You should also know that the Prester John is a Christian. Uh oh, his name is George. So we got to choose our Georges. We know we're not talking Christian like Christianity. They keep saying Nestorian. Nestor means old king or related to an old king. Renowned for wise counsel or a wise king. George. We know that gang is kind. This gang is also... You know, has translations in George, but George is also a title. And, you know, we've had, you know, good Georges and you have negative Georges. You have good Prestors, you have negative Prestors. You know what I mean? You know, back and forth we go. So you have good Davids and others that call themselves David that aren't good. So these are titles. You have Georgia here in America. Are we talking Genghis George or are we talking a George in the line of Davids? He holds the land for the great Khan. So this George is holding the land for the great Khan, but not all that Preston John Hill. Hmm. So this sounds like Genghis, man. This George, sounds like Genghis who... Doesn't quite have all the land of Prester, but he, he got himself a piece of the promised land. So he holds the land for the great Khan, but not all that Prester John held, but only a small part of it. But indeed, I tell you that the great Khans have always given their daughters and family members to the kings who reigned, who are of the lineage of Prester John. So if you want to be a grand Khan, you have to have a Sheba by your side. You're going to have to have a daughter in the lineage of Prester John. And that's why it was so important to get that validation because Genghis Khan could not be a great Khan without it. So he wanted to be certified as a great Khan and David wasn't allowing it for his particular reasons. I mean, he clearly wanted the con, right? He wanted the power. And Preston knew that. So he, it wasn't about not liking Genghis. It was about someone trying to be out of order with it. If you want this, you got to take this. So we had the greatest world war that you ain't never heard of. Now, this coincides with a lot of drama we're getting out of Nephite North and that Nephite the Naga series. You know, with this big catastrophe and the whole face of the world being changed. The whole face of the world being changed. What does that have to do with Atlantis falling? Hmm? What does all this have to do with a reset. Things could be reset in your favor or against you, my not. It's up to you to choose up. It's up to us, my not. This is the Prester Hour, digging on a great book. Prester John, the legend and its sources compiled by Keegan Brewer. Crusade text in translation 27. We are searching Hosea 3 and 5. We search for Hawaii. We keep that cold. Then we are off.
to the races to find Preston John before they find you, my knock. Allow why to the tribe. Stay up. Suit up. Choose up.